Welcome back to another edition of Forecast Lab. Things are rotating in the Great Plains, as we would expect this time of year. In fact, 30 years ago, the Gainesville tornado of April 26th, 1994, and that tornado was caught by Carson Eads and Gene Roden. For today, tornadoes touching down in Lincoln, Nebraska. Some chasers really hit it lucky today. This one appears to be going over the interstate. And uh, yeah, plenty of imagery here from today. So anyway, we're not going to cover the footage because, you know, copyright and all that. But I will show you the radar. Here we go back to about 12 or 1 o'clock this afternoon. One lone isolated supercell around Rockville, but then this other complex comes together southwest of Lincoln, northeast of Concordia, and moves to the north-northeast. We continue during the 2 p.m. hour and go in for a closer look. There's Lincoln, and there's our supercell closing in on the town, so we'll go in really close there. You notice I don't use smoothing. I do prefer looking at the raw data. And you can see this cell moving on up towards the north, northeast. Has that classic flying eagle structure. The main updraft located right there, the hook. And this is the forward flank downdraft up there to the north. Now if we look at the storm relative velocity, well, we need to correct that for the storm motion. So I'm going to go ahead and put in a storm motion vector. This looks like about maybe 200 at 30. And that will subtract out the storm motion and let us look at the circulation. And the greens are inbound. So the area we're going to be watching is right here. The velocity shows a mesocyclone coming together. There it is. You've got the outbounds and the inbounds. So that's going to be cyclonic rotation. And it strengthens quite a bit moving on up into Lincoln. So that's going to be the center of the TVS you can see that's right there in that updraft area. We move up to 1.35 p.m. TVS crossing right there. And it's right there in that updraft area. And then it continues on towards the northeast. The shear, 67 in and about 40 out. That's over 100 knots of shear. And we'll take you through that sequence a little bit further, 140 to 150 p.m. Hook Echo moving on up towards the northeast. That looks like a beware just above one to two kilometers. We're sampling it at about 10,000 feet. We're pretty far from the radar right here, but that's going to be the center of the core. And uh, storm level velocity showing that TVS right in there. Spectrum width, well, it's a little bit range folded. Anyway, that will give you a quick rundown on what's happening there. And there's the text of that tornado warning. So let's move to the surface map and look at the big picture. 994 millibar low in southeastern Nebraska. Cold front extending down into the Texas Cap Rock and a dry line just ahead of that from east of Wichita down to Wichita Falls and Del Rio, Texas. The moisture axis flowing right up there through Houston, southeastern Oklahoma and into eastern Kansas. The 850 millibar chart showing how things are structured. The flow is a little bit veered. In other words, instead of coming right up I-35 into Kansas and Nebraska, it's taken a track a little bit further to the east. So some of our severe weather risks being confined to kind of a narrow corridor today. But eastern Nebraska, strong backflow at the surface helping to support a risk for tornadic storms. At the moment, three tornado watches issued eastern Nebraska, eastern Oklahoma, and northeast Texas. The area in Nebraska in this zone of southeasterly flow, the SRH plotted on the map right there, that's the storm melt of helicity, and through that region, the hodographs are curved and stretched out. The second area being monitored is in eastern Oklahoma. Here, the winds are not as backed. Now, the wind plots you see on here, those are actually shear vectors, and those are a reflection of the upper-level flow. The actual low-level flow is out of the south to southwest, but along this boundary, 
the winds could be locally backed. And of course, the other region being monitored, northeast Texas, the winds are backed in that region out of the south-southeast due to strong pressure falls west of Fort Worth. And a fourth area being considered in eastern Kansas. There's not a tornado watch at this time as we record this, but storms are going up south of Emporia. Strong bulk shears and strong heating out ahead of this complex and some of this enhanced moisture could certainly see a few tornadoes in there as well. These kinds of severe weather days are pretty frustrating because we can't focus on one specific area. Storms everywhere between Houston, Austin, all the way to Omaha. So we'll just go ahead and work our way south to north. There's our complex in northeast Texas. You can see that it's not really progressing eastward. Part of that is due to the strong low-level flow. There's not really much of a component of motion going eastward. The upper level flow, of course, is pretty much oriented right along the boundary. But these are the tail end storms there, west of Temple, out towards Hillsboro, and on up towards Paris, Texas. And you can see the low level moisture streaming northward. The Fort Worth radar at this hour is showing a complex of storms south of DFW. We did have a confirmed tornado west of Corsicana. Looks like a lot of the activity has subsided a bit, but it continues to work up the boundary instead of progressing eastward. In fact, it seems like there's a slight northward drift on this activity. And we can see the dry line right here. Some storms going up around Ada. Dry line located about like that. And I think that boundary has just about become stationary at this time. Heading further north up along that dry line into eastern Oklahoma, that's going to be the dry line. Storms going up around Ada, they do look a little bit elevated there on satellite. And you can see the old anvils out around Fort Smith down towards Idabel. A new complex in southeastern Kansas, so there will be severe weather risks in the Kansas City area southward over the next few hours. And we get closer to that surface flow. This gets into that zone of backed flow around Omaha and Lincoln. So severe weather risks over the next several hours as that low drifts to the east. So instead of trying to now cast all this stuff, I'm just going to give you the high resolution rapid refresh. This is from the 18Z run. It does capture that convection fairly well. And you can see downstream from those showers and storms, the moisture a little bit more depleted. So the theta E's, which you're seeing here by this cyan and purple coloring, they are a little bit lower right through here. So the storms going up in central Oklahoma, that's going to be on that moisture axis right there. And then going into this evening, you can see the evolution of this convection. Storms continuing to remain right there along that axis training and basically working up that boundary some secondary convection possibly breaking out around 6 or 7 p.m north of dfw but you can see right there at the very end that low level flow really starting to back here now i'm not too sure if we're going to get any organized convection after dark but some of those cells could be supercellular with that strongly backed flow. So this will have to be monitored and it will lift to the northwest as we tend to get through that with that kind of aggressive developing return flow. So some of those severe weather risks may spread north into the DFW area, but the high resolution rapid refresh not really going for any significant convection after dark, but you can see a few cells right around Waco. Anyway, it will have to be monitored, but at the very end of the run, well, at least uh, by midnight, looking pretty good across DFW. You can see that dry line receding rapidly. And there's the other perspective there in the Corn Belt. There's that Theta E ridge heading into southeastern Nebraska. Going through the remainder of the afternoon, there's those storms breaking out right there, pushing into western Iowa, and other cells moving into the St. Joseph and Kansas City metro and there's how things evolve through the remainder of the evening
convection moving rapidly to the northeast and weakening and there's the dry line pretty much stationary right there around St. Joseph but the southern edge rapidly shifting to the west and setting up for tomorrow. And we are looking at some significant potential for tomorrow for a couple reasons. One, you probably noticed no big MCS destroying the environment overnight tonight. So we will be primed up for tomorrow. The other reason is overnight, this strong polar front jet through Arizona, New Mexico, that will be pushing into the panhandles in Oklahoma and Kansas for tomorrow. That's how it looks tomorrow afternoon. The main problem here is the highly meridional flow, deep southwesterlies, which gives us more of a unidirectional hodograph. However, if you get any localized backing out of the southeast, then you have your directional shear. So it's not going to take much to get a favorable environment for supercells. Now, one problem further south at 7 p.m., you can see that the winds in this region right here are a lot weaker. So the hodographs are not as stretched out. So some of the better potential will be confined to the Caprock, Kansas, Oklahoma City, and areas to the north. Okay, let's take a look at our weather going into tonight and Saturday. There's our weather system there in Nebraska. This surface low is going to move into Minnesota overnight. Another low developing in Kansas. There's new energy coming out of the southwestern U.S. And this upper level low in the continental divide region, that's going to be responsible for winter storm warnings. Pikes Peak above 7,500 feet could see up to 14 inches of snow. And all through central Colorado, the front range, winter storm watches and winter weather advisories, mostly above 9,000 feet, but places like Frisco, Breckenridge, Estes Park, and Interstate 80 in the high country east of Laramie, they could see some accumulating snow on the roads. And further to the west, also some snow problems in the mountains of Utah, wind advisories through California and into the mountains of Southern California as well. Certainly a lot going on. So let's bring it forward through the morning. You can see that dry line start to reorganize across western Oklahoma and northwest Texas. That will be a nucleus for convective development in the early afternoon, probably around Oklahoma City, Lawton, maybe down towards Wichita Falls. That whole area will be of concern, and I'm sure we're going to be seeing the convective outlooks focusing on that area. Thickness gradient in western Texas and eastern New Mexico. That's supporting that frontal boundary right there. But with that deep southwesterly flow, that cold front is not really going to advance very far to the east immediately. So we're going to see numerous rounds of thunderstorms across Oklahoma, Missouri, North Texas going into the later half of the weekend. Gradually, this activity lifts up into the Midwest and another Pacific weather system coming in that's going to head mostly for the northern plains. And then later in the week, we're going to be seeing some cold Canadian air start to slip southward. Snow breaking out around Rapid City for Thursday, and that snow will track into Fargo and northern Minnesota going into late Thursday and Friday. Then there's kind of a cool pattern for next Friday and Saturday. Quite a change from what we have right now. And this cold air mass will remain in place with an overrunning pattern developing in the Rio Grande Valley and New Mexico for next weekend. And we need to get this closed up, but there's that complex in northeast Texas from about Waxahachie over to, I guess, around Canton. Very strong storm there with a tornado warning. This is close to where I saw the eclipse. We witnessed it from right there northeast of Canton couple weeks ago. Anyway, a lot of convection and one little isolated storm around San Saba. Looks like it's starting to fall apart. And yes, quite a mess up there along the Nebraska-Iowa border down into parts of extreme northwestern Missouri. Numerous tornado warnings. Some of these are confirmed tornadoes in the Omaha area. 
And uh, of course, our focus is on synoptic weather and forecasting, so we're not going to sit here and run a nowcast. There's other channels that are probably better for that, but there's those tornado warnings spreading into Iowa as we record this. So I should probably go and get this uploaded. And uh, yeah, just looking out here off the edge, the severe risks diminish a little bit going into Kansas and Oklahoma. So yeah, we did not really cover this live today and I got kind of a late start. The reason for that is intense work going on with digital atmosphere. It's being rewritten from the ground up. And I was up till five in the morning last night, so I'm really in no shape to be running a live weather stream on top of that. But we're gonna try to do that when we get into a moderate risk type event. May will be good for that, so stay tuned. So we'll be back on Monday for the supporter video. So if you want to get in on that, there's the link to our Patreon, and that will get you set up. And we'll be back otherwise for the Wednesday show in just five days. Take care, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.